Welcome to Local Faces, Local Places. I'm Janine Pugh. Now my guest today is life psychologist Ken White. Welcome Ken, how are you going today? Marvellous. Take us on a, on a journey Ken. Um, how did you get to where you are now with the dog trialist and trialling and, and did you think you'd be here back then in the days? Well, way back when I was, suppose, young, I don't know, five or six, uh, my father used to get pups off a friend and I'd sort of, you know, just get with them and what have you and really just handle them, I suppose. Right. And then this Robert Elliott used to take one back and he'd leave one with Dad. And I suppose that's how I sort of started, just getting used to, it was like a pet, but it was a farm dog. So I suppose that's how I sort of started to like sheep dog. What about high school? Were you interested in dogs then or did you just do the normal normal high school learning learning things? I went to Waitaki Boys in Omaru and I was brought up in Central Otago, like Ran Furley, Matt Patiraya. So yeah, you come from an area where it's pretty sporty and families were yeah, sort of well tied together. Like the house, it, most houses were, the rules were in the same in every house you might say, yeah. And we were encouraged to do well at sport or, or achieve things where your dreams were free and go for it. You know, life's your oyster. It's always a good philosophy to live by, isn't it? Well, you, you've got to do it now, though. Eh? Or if you don't, you can't do it when you're dead. <laughs> so with, with the dogs, you know, after high school, what, when did you first get into um, well, trialling? I, I suppose I took an agricultural course that was still at Waitagi, which was good, still had us involved with animals and that sort of thing. Then I left school and worked on a sheep farm. But back in those days, the wages on, you know, for a, for a person working on a sheep farm wasn't that much, so I ended up crutching and end up in the finished shearing. So then I did a lot of shearing and then sort of moved to, to uh, my 20 acres, and then we got married Natalie, and then, she, oh, well, actually, I got my first pup about then when I got my 20 acres, so there was between my wife and the, and the first pup. So, yes, yeah, so they amalgamated, and we got a pretty good... Um, or well, say rapport between us, between the dogs and my wife. It's always a bonus factor, isn't it? Well, it's a big plus. <laughs> Someone's got to feed the dogs when you go away. So was that down south? That was Waikaka at that stage. I shifted from Central Otago, like school, high school, worked around Mani Atoto, and then shifted from there. From away from the final, really, sheep, they were a bit harder to shear than Romneys. I mean, sorry, the half-breeds were harder to shear than the Romneys. So we went down south to shear Romneys. Okay, so how long did you do shearing for? Oh, 20 years. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Oh, well, it was, it was something I enjoyed and it was good money and you could move around the countryside and you could see a lot of different farmers and, and big thing is you see a lot of different good dog trailers. Okay. And I think that's where I sort of started from. Right, so back in the down south? Back down south, I sure for a farmer, A.D. McCall, and he invited me to a dog show, or sorry, to a young farmer's um day. And my first dog took him there, and at that stage I didn't have what are called sides on him. I just had well go and go back, and AD said, well, we'll better put sides on him. And I sort of looked at him and I thought, what's sides? So yeah, that was the start of controlling a dog. What are sides? Left and right. Okay. <laughs> like handlebars, turn left, turn right, stop. So you entered into some competitions down south? Yeah, it started with the Young Farmers Club, and then from there I went into what they call nursery trials. And from there you sort of thought, well, these other fellows, a friend of mine could qualify for the New Zealands, and I thought, well, if he can, surely I can, if I can learn, so I did, and that's where it started. Just like a disease, I'd call it, I suppose. Like a yeah, well, parasite. Well, yeah, that, and of course you get a bit older, you played cricket and gave up cricket, and it says, you know, as long as you can walk and whistle, you can do the job. Okay. Yeah. Is it um, a lot of hard hours? Yeah, it is to train, but that's, I suppose that's why I enjoy it, because you train, you're actually taking a pup, well I, I like it because I breed my own, and I think that's where the big enjoyment is, you breed them, you can see what they've got, and if you're on the right track or the wrong track, and I think that's the big, well that's a big buzz for me, and to breed good looking dogs, uh, that's the reason I started, because I saw a lot of good ugly dogs, and I mean, dare I say it, but you don't buy an ugly ram or an ugly bull, and usually you don't marry an ugly woman, so it works both ways, doesn't it? And they'll sell good pups, good looking pups will sell better than mm, ones that are just a wee bit different. When did you start breeding and what breed of dog do you breed? I started nearly 30 years ago with the f dog that I started, Jake, was given to me when I first got married, that was way back in, better get it right, 73. 
hope that's all right. We better edit that one. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, started with Jake, and I liked his confirmation. I liked the way he worked, and he he was a dog I just started with go back a while ago. Then I had to retrain him, and for a dog to be able to retrain and whatever, I thought, well, yeah, he's got something special, and he did have. And, of course, I was only learning then, so it was, yeah, what I had, I didn't realise what I had. And then I got Chang and Queen, or, you know, as they go, oh, you got better, well, not better dogs, say, but more, yeah, what you're aiming for. And then the Chang one on that same line, one in New Zealand, and he went to Australia. Well, it's actually quite funny. It's 20 years ago now that he went to Australia and beat Australia. And sadly, our test team got beaten last month. So, yeah. And we had to do it, the Aussie rules, 20 years ago, not half and half course. Mm. Mm. So that was, yeah. And you didn't look back and think there was, you know, you just wanted to beat the Aussies, didn't you? That's all you had to do. And when did you move up to Nelson? Uh, 82. Yeah, we took on a dairy farm in 82. And I thought when I first looked at it, I thought, well, we can put sheep on it. But, you know, the Rye Valley, you get 80 to 100 inches of rainfall. And then when you see what they're making, what they did back, back then in 82, what they were making compared to sheep, nearly 10 years or more. Well, if you're not too sure, oh, about 91, I think we went out there. And of course, we had rod genomics then. Mm. And Mr. Longy wasn't going to milk my cows, so I had to make a decision, didn't I? Either the dogs or the cows. So after the trip to Australia, I realised that, hey, there's more to life than milking cows. And dare I say it, money. So that's where I started really getting into the dogs. One door closes, another door opens, and you've got to take, you know, the good with the bad, and way back when I was, I suppose, a young kid, you always wanted to represent New Zealand, your biggest dream. I wasn't big enough to say be an all black or good enough to represent New Zealand at cricket, but I did it with dog trials. Now you just come back from the World Sheep Dog Trials in Wales. I better not say it was as good as my honeymoon because we might begin to trouble, but it was, it was lovely. It was great, yeah. 20 years ago when I was in Australia, we got to know the Australian team pretty well, and we always said, you know, it'd be great to have a world dog trial. And we only sort of, that was just between us, because it was just between Australia and New Zealand. We thought, why can't we? And of course, it was quarantine and math rules that, that forbidden us for that. But the great door, sadly, the way the door opened was because they got foot and mouth in England, and that is sad, but that is actually how it opened up for us. And what was it, uh, 2001 I think it was, when they had foot and mouth, and they had the first World Dog Trial in 02, but they didn't invite a lot of other countries, and then 205 they invited New Zealand. But I went over then to Ireland as an independent, and they sent a test team over in 205. Then this time they just left the door open for competition, whoever wanted to go to Wales in 208. So you don't take, you know, you don't stand back when you can go, can you? How were the results for you? And did you enter as a team or were you in individuals? We were originally going as individuals, but then when they heard that there was some New Zealanders going, they had a New Zealander was over in Scotland at that time, and they encouraged him, if he would come into the team, that would make five, and we'd become a team. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. He was actually only dog trialling for, I think, two years, but he had one of the better mentors in Scotland, as I put it, Bobby Dowell taught him in Man Alive. In two years, what he learned from nothing was unreal. So he became, we, Jim Wilson, our captain, he took two dogs, and Rob Mather from Levin, he was taking Lace. But as it prospired, we ended up Lace with Math Quarantine, or um, blood, it was, um, his vaccinations weren't up to date. So she got a, uh, a trip to Heathrow and then home again because the paperwork wasn't right. So we only had four dogs in our New Zealand team, so we, we were a bit gutted. But then when we heard the results, we actually beat England and France, and they had five dogs. In other words, we gave them 220 points in. This is a World Championship, not the World Cup Rugby. This is, and we beat um, England and France, and our All Blacks can't do that. So we thought, well, are we good as them? And we felt, no, we're actually better. And the big thing was, we had to pay our own way. And someone said, I'm not dead sure what it was to send our All Blacks, whether it was 52 million or not, but you've got to look and think, well, hmm, did we get value for money? We didn't make the semi-final? No. <laughs> and then on top of that, our captain, first time ever, made the semi-final and he made the final. 
So that was a great achievement. Wow. And the biggest thing is we don't dog troll that way. We do not dog troll that way at all. We nearly do actually the opposite. And we had to retrain our dogs to do that. That was the thing. It is a good way to dog troll. It's different, but it's challenging. But it's different. It's like playing rugby against rugby league. Do you mean dif different on the other side of the world doing it differently? Is that the different you mean? Yeah, or? different in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, they've been doing it that way for 100 odd years, 140 odd years. And we've changed because we use three sheep, not five or 10. And they, their way is they have five sheep, two, two with collars on and three without. And you've got to outrun 800 yards to 1,000 yards without command. Oh. Mm, without command. We can command our dogs in New Zealand, so we had to retrain them to, do, to run without command. And then we can pull them down. We're allowed to command them left and right. That's the sides we're talking about now. And then the outrun is left and right again. That's, you know, turn your bike right, turn your bike left, and the dog's going to go left and right, and then carry on, run on with a run-on whistle. So we had to teach them all that. Then we, the course is you have hurdles to go through. So we had to pull them down through a set of hurdles. And this driving away was different. That's why we invented the hunt away, to hunt sheep away, not hunt them away with the heading dog. So we had to teach our heading dogs to hunt sheep away through these hurdles triangle course, 150 yards to the first set of hurdles, across the paddock, 150 yards to another set of hurdles, through there, back down to you in the ring, and then you had to separate two without collars on in that ring, that's what we call shedding. So the dog has to come through and take them away, which you can do on the sheep farm, lambing and what have you, but a lot of us now don't actually shed off lambing time, we just, you know, leave them free range. And then pen them, take them back out again, and then the hard part is to shed off one with a red collar. That's the hard part. And to shed it away, the dog's got to wear it away, they call it. And that's the tricky one. Whoa. But the big one is it's all got to be done in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and that to me mm, can be ridiculous, but you've got to do it. It's really where we walk our sheep, three sheep, we've got to really walk them quietly, whereas over there they sort of have them on the trot. Right. It's still good control, but it's at the trot. Okay. But it is, it shows, to me it shows a real farm dog. It's not a free sheep dog, it's a farm dog. Right, you mean the other way or our way? Well, both ways, we're getting to, I mean, even on the stage too, I'm not farming anymore, you just sort of say dog trolling, but it's good to see a real dog work sheep still, not a light dog getting away because the sheep are, are wild. Okay. But our penning is different, that's where over the seas they realise our dogs could pen sheep because they've got a rope on their gate over there. A uh, six foot rope and you can bring the gate round and close it whereas here in New Zealand we've got to stand in one place and do not move yeah. whereas over there you can actually nearly do it well you do some of them do it all with man and that's where they gain the time our long head's good but our yarding needs to be looked at because we're not doing that against Australia so our test team to me well the sad thing is and our test team has only got half a course we've got the most sheep in the world and the most dogs I would think and yet we've only got half a test course so Somewhere along the line, our powers to be have got to mm, look at it.